The Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have lived with the coronavirus for 10 months now and had no hope that things would get better until the news last week of the advent of a vaccine that would be available in the last couple of weeks of December. The word advent refers to the coming of an important person or thing. In our reading from Isaiah today, God's chosen people, the Israelites, had lived as exiles in Babylon, not for 10 months, but for 70 years and had no hope that things would get better. Jerusalem and its temple had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar's army and in 586 BC had taken the, the Israelites 1,647 miles to Babylon where they became captives, exiles from the Promised Land. After 70 years, memories of their homeland had all but disappeared. Children, sons and daughters and grandchildren had been born who had never seen their homeland. The Israelites had had no word from God for years and felt abandoned by God. That long ago, some 540 years before Jesus came, they were saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? And then God spoke to them. God spoke not only comfort, but comfort you, my people, says your God. For a grieving, hopeless people, no words would, could have been more hopeful than those words said to them. And after the words of comfort, they heard a voice saying, prepare the way of the Lord. Well, that Hebrew word for Lord was Yahweh, which was the Hebrew term for God. In other words, God was coming to them. God had not abandoned them. And then, make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill made low, and the crooked straight and the rough places plain. They weren't being told to prepare a super highway from Babylon through the desert back to Jerusalem. That straight way to the Lord was for them to believe, to trust that indeed, surprising as it was, God was coming. And when they were released from captivity by King Cyrus about two years later, they were to return to Jerusalem and to proclaim to the cities of Judah that God had again brought them out of the wilderness. 
just as Moses had led them out of 40 years in the wilderness years before, God had again brought them into the promised land. And later in our reading from Isaiah, God would come with a strong hand and a mighty arm, but different from kings of the world. This God would come kind and tender. He would feed his flocks like a shepherd, gather the young in his arms and hold them to his bosom and tenderly care for those that were with young. The Israelites had no idea when their God would come. No idea. But when he came, when he did come, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We know when their God came. In 19 days or so, we will celebrate the advent, the coming of Jesus, who did that, who fed his flock like a shepherd, who gathered the little ones in his arms, who laid down his life for the sheep. But how do we prepare for his coming? The first question is, do we want to prepare for Christmas or do we want to prepare for Christ? We know how to prepare for Christmas. First of all, we need to make a list of those we need to get gifts for. Well, there's Uncle Leo and Aunt Edith. They really don't need anything for Christmas, but we need to give them something, even though they're pretty well off. And so uh, we get out this year's Sharper Image Catalog. And once again, it comes to the rescue. For Uncle Leo, on page 34, there's the Fantasy Jellyfish Aquarium with five lifelike rubber jellyfish that sway in a gentle, silent current. It's only $100. And for Aunt Edith, who we know is a little vain, on page 43, we could give her the first world's, the first home LED lip therapy device. It uses LED light to stimulate collagen production in the lips to make them larger. Just three minutes a day and just $120 and we've got them taken care of. Life is good. But if we want to prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas, what do we give him? I mean, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies and everything else in his hands. What do we give him? You know the answer to that. You give to somebody or something that's dear to Jesus' heart. You know that children and the poor and people who are hungry are dear to Jesus' heart. And so you can go to another catalog, the ELCA catalog of good gifts. And on page 12, you can send a girl, a child to school for $40. On page 11, you can send a poor woman to school that will teach her how to learn to farm better for $75. And on page 17, you can give a month's worth of food to orphans and vulnerable children for $25. And when you hit the send button to order those gifts, Jesus' words may come to mind. Inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my children, you've done it unto me. I'm not sure you'll hear those same words if you give the jellyfish. Well, there's one more advent we need to think about and in Jesus' words, of that day and of that hour, no one knows, not even the Son of Man. In a way, Jesus is saying, ready or not, here I come. But how do we prepare for his coming at the end? Well, what did Jesus do to prepare for decisions, actions that he needed to make? 
What did he do the night before he needed to choose the 12 disciples that would be his legacy for after he, le after he left? He prayed. What did he do before he walked on water? Before Peter's confession at the transfiguration, before his teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer? He prayed. And his disciples to us are to pray, especially in times that are hard, like the night he prayed on the Mount of Olives. He was not talking about prayers of thanksgiving and confession, though. But his prayer, the prayer at the core of the Lord's Prayer, was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And as we prepare for his coming at the end, every day we need, to, we need to pray that prayer. Not just thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And not even God, may your will be done in my life. But we need to think about that. What would it mean for God's will to be done in our life that day? For example, would God want me to send the angry email I wrote last night about why the Christmas trees are lighted before Christmas and it's not even Christmas? I, I'm angry about that. Should, should I send that? Or would God want me to buy Uncle Leo those fake rubber jellyfish? If you think about it, we don't need to wait to see Jesus until he comes. The kingdom of God has not yet come, but in a way it has come. And so it's not only true that ready or not, here he comes, but it's also true ready or not, here he is. Imagine the person in your life that you admire the most, the person you sort of put on a pedestal and you invite them to come for dinner one evening in the near future at 6 p.m. and they accept your invitation. And at 5 p.m. on that afternoon, you're not ready. The, the living room needs to be cleaned up. The stacks of catalogs and, and magazines need, be, need to be stuffed under the couch. You need to go through the kitchen and baste the roast one more time. You need to put on clothes that are more acceptable for, for a company and the doorbell rings and it's the person you invited. And you stammer and say, I, I'm so honored that you've come and, and I'm so sorry because you're an hour early. I didn't expect you to come now. And he says, oh no, I've come early to help you get ready for my arrival. Jesus left his spirit with us to help us every day every day of our lives to get ready for the day he comes at the last. And that is music that comforts us, God's people. Amen.